We are back to another brand new week. We're going to keep working on this Rolling Hills sign. Hope everybody had a great weekend. We did. Uh, a lot of great things going on. Thanks for all the great comments on this series. It seems to be helping a lot of people and you guys seem to be responding to it uh, pretty well. So I'm going to keep on with it and uh, it's going to be at least this video and at least one more, maybe two more. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how far we can get on this video. Um, so first things first, I've been getting some questions on um, aspects of this sign. Uh, the first question was, and so I want to answer those kind of as I go through them. First question is, why on the edge... When I, when I was doing the background, after I finished the profiling, I went all the way around the edge and all the way around all the carving. Why did I use the 90 degree bit rather than just going deeper with the profile bit, which is what I normally do. If I'm normally carving small stuff, small outset letters or small artwork, normally I'll just set my profile a cutter deeper and make a, a that buffer zone with that but being as this is a bigger sign um, I wanted to give myself I knew I was going to be having to do a lot of background a lot of cleanup I wanted a little bit fatter line so that's the reason I used the the um, 90 degree to go around everything again after I did my profiling you can do it either way I just wanted a little bit fatter line going around everything. So that's the reason uh, I could have done it with the profile bit. It just wouldn't have left it bigger as big a line. Um, second question was, oh yeah, somebody was asking about when I was doing the background, was I lifting the router a lot because it really couldn't tell or was the router down all the time? Um, the router was down flat all the time. This is my standard background. This is the background that I've done for, oh, uh, 40 years, 40 something years. And so when I do that, the, the, the uh, router is flat the whole time. The only time that I will lift it is if I've got a really tight spot. Um, like maybe, it seems to me like, uh, like in here, like in here, in these tight spots in here, or, you know, when I'm coming up here, if I don't feel like the, um, the quarter inch cutter will go all the way through there. Then I'll lift the router a little bit to make sure I don't nick my, my tight spots. But other than that, that router base was flat the whole time when I do this. Now, when I do other types of background, like where I do what I call my dimple effect, that is just up and down, up and down, up and down. That would have taken me 22 hours on a sign this size. It would have taken me a long time. My standard background went much, much faster than that would have been. But um, I'm happy with the way it's coming out so far. So that's that's uh, the answer on that. And then also, people were asking, several people asking emails and comments, um, aren't you worried about hitting the screws from the back side? And uh, no, but let me show you why I'm not. So this is the screw I'm, I used on them. And I, I believe it's one inch, exactly one inch. It is. Those are one inch screws. This is, is basically an inch and a half or thereabouts. So even when that screw is countersunk and go in there a little bit deeper, it still leaves me at least three eighths of an inch. Yeah, let me, let me do it that way. That leaves at least a half inch there. But even with it countersunk uh, a little bit, leaves me way over three eighths of an inch. And I never went deeper than a quarter of an inch on my carving. So that's I, I've kind of learned that over the years, learned to get the right size screw for what you're doing. So um, I knew that I was never gonna be in there and be have the danger of hitting those screw tips. Um, by just going quarter of an inch deep and quarter of an inch deep was plenty deep enough on all of this. So, all right, so let's move on to the next step. What we're going to do now is all the carving is done, but now what I have to do is make sure that I don't have any high spots. So, um, babe, if you can, so, and that, one of the reasons I'm sitting down is I can hold the board up at an angle like this, or actually I'll show you at an angle like that. A little bit more yeah and that gives you a, a vantage point that you might have some high spots like if you can look right there I don't know if you can see that 
that's a high spot and I want to be sure that I don't have any high spots or I want as, as few high spots out in this background as possible otherwise they're going to come up as white spots after I do my sanding so I have to go around the edge over here you can see where I went around with my 90 degree I've just got a bunch of stuff that I need to kind of take out now that that'll be done that could also be done with the brush that helps too but what I need to do is, is spend probably 10 15 minutes and just go around this whole thing and make sure I don't have any anything that's going to show up as a as a high spot now for instance uh, right here you can see there's a little bit of a kind of a little fuzz and curl right there so what I do is I am going to go over this whole sign I'll stand up now I'm going to go over this whole sign and just make sh absolutely sure that I don't have any fuzzy spots or high spots the fuzzy spots if you don't get rid of those and all that loose loose chips and stuff back in there then what will happen is after it's sprayed black and then sand it off then those things if they come loose then you'll end up with little white specks down in that background and you want to eliminate that as much as you possibly can so you got to get rid of the high spots and any loose loose little chips or sawdust back in there so in here i've got some stuff down in that groove you guys can't see it from that angle so i'll just but I'll just make sure that I don't have any, any bad spots in there. Now here is a really big spot that I missed. So I'll just pop that out of there. So anyway, that's the thing. That's, that's the next step. That's what I have to do now. So again, now here, here's a spot. Hold on, hold on. Let me get to it. Here's a spot that you can see just a touch of black there. That means that if, if I left that, then when I sanded it off, that would end up being a white spot on a black background. So I got to get rid of that. So I'm going to do a little bit more. And what I'll do is sometimes I'll just rub my hand over the top of this, over that background. And some most of the time I can feel something if it's too high. If I if I don't see it, sometimes I can feel it. Hope I'm not moving too fast for you there, babe. By the way, we're getting a lot of great comments on my wife's uh, camera skills. Mm -hmm. She's doing an amazing job following me with the with the camera doing some great stuff. All right, so I've got pretty much the top half of this thing done. I don't want you guys to have to suffer through all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take 10 or 15 minutes, finish this up off camera. I said it right that time, you up did. off camera. Uh, and then um, then we'll come back and we'll do the edge and we'll, we'll get into the rest of it, the next steps. So we'll be right back. All right, so uh, one thing is I had a, a little bit of a knot here that had a, uh, basically a hole in it so I had to kind of fill that up I'm gonna sand that off real quick you can see that actually turned out really nice but remember the only thing <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the only thing that's gonna be wood color is the tree everything else can be black and gold um, so I don't even have to worry about that I just wanted a flat surface but I had to get that done and out of the way. So now we are going to do the edge. I'm going to do a chamfer on the back and on the front. So just kind of a slight chamfer on the back. Uh, that's maybe a little too deep. Now the bit that I'm using is the 45 degree chamfer bit with the bearing on it. This is the same one that does the scalloping as well. And it also does the chamfer or the bevel. Here we go.
and we'll go deeper on the front. Did I throw sawdust at you? Right in my face. Sorry about that. You're not. You're right. <laughs> I'm not. <coughs> All right. That's pretty deep. Let's see. that far <coughs> with that remember guys uh, also is when you get out here with this router you want to make sure that you've got it uh, sliding on the flat surface anytime you've got this is a pretty big border so it's not an issue but if this border was like half this size I'd want to make sure that my router bit my router base doesn't dip into that and it will uh, mess up my uniformity on the um, on the chamfer on this wide two inch uh, border it's not near as as dangerous thing off and then we're going to come back and we're going to spray this black all right guys so we have our board here we are ready to spray so i'm going to spray all the way around the edge i'm just using the rust-oleum primer you know i only use the primer or the the marsh ink for uh, anything that i'm going to be sanding now with this, I know I don't have to do a lot of sanding. I am going to go ahead and do the sanding because I like the the looks of the reveal. So I am going to sand the whole surface of the sign, but I wouldn't necessarily have to because that border is going to be gold and the letters are going to be gold. So I wouldn't necessarily have to, but being as I'm doing this on camera, I want to have the option to to show the whole the whole sign sanded. So there we there we have that. We're gonna let that dry for a couple minutes and we'll come back and do the down in the background. Okay, so now remembering I don't have any sanding sealer on this like I normally do with my pine, but again, this is the only thing that's gonna be showing wood color. Everything else is gonna be painted, so I'm not that worried about it, but I'm still I still want to be really careful and not puddle this black up too much in any one spot. But if I were to get a little bit of bleeding, I wouldn't worry about it too much unless it was on the tree. And that's the part that I, I want to be most careful with is spraying around that tree. So I'm just short spurts. This is the way I kind of like to spray again guys remember one of the things I talk about a lot is not over spraying especially with this pine this is kind of a special deal because it's all going to be painted or virtually all of it's going to be painted so it's not that critical but it's just always a good idea not to not to over spray and you just don't have to wow there's a lot of silence <laughs> all right i'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and dry and then i'm going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees and we'll catch some uh, spots we missed all right so let's just 
just to hit it, hit a few of these spots that are just a little bit light. Real gingerly. One of the things I talk about are the reasons of not to overspray is that even if it doesn't look like they're all com like you can see some if it looks like you can see some of that wood through the black once it's sanded off guys you'll never even know it's there something that took me a long time to learn how's that look babe looks look pretty covered yeah all right so we'll move on to the next step all right, you guys, you can see we are now outside. I want to do something that um, some guys have talked about a little bit. I haven't tried it yet. Well, I've tried it just in the last uh, few hours. But um, I, the back of this sign is going to be sprayed black. And so I have set up my, my critter sprayer with black. And this is the black that I'm using. Uh, I guess I hit the can a little bit too hard when I was putting the lid back on. That would be, they just don't, they just don't make cans like they used to. Is it Rust-Oleum? <laughs> it is Rust-Oleum um, and it's uh, water-based latex. So says it's good for indoor, outdoor, good for wood. So that's what I decided to use. Now I put it in my critter sprayer. I, I was playing around with it earlier and I just washed it out a couple times. Um, I actually filled this like two or three times just to kind of rinse it out, make sure everything was good. And now what I've, uh, a thing that I've asked my wife to find actually, and she did, she found the, the big jars, the big mason jars with the, um, with the right size mouth on it. Size of that moth. Moth attacking you? Yeah, we had rain all night last night, so we are really lucky that we're not raining right now. I think it's supposed to rain this afternoon. So anyway, so the cool thing about these big jars is that thing will just sit there no problem at all. Um, and I don't have to worry about having a bracket for it or it tipping over. So here's what we are gonna do. Now what I also have found out is that the black that I have on the edge is this spray can, you know, the primer. And it matches perfectly with uh, with this latex as far as color goes. So I don't have to worry about that at all. All right, so I think we are all set here. Let's uh, see how this works. Let's try not to spray my French doors over there. Now what you have to, I'm still kind of learning this whole thing. I think this may take two coats. You can see that the wood is kind of showing through there. And the fact that we now have the sun coming out and putting sun on my back and casting a shadow. And any second now, you guys will probably hear the the compressor kick on. Now I haven't thinned this at all, which I probably could. And it, I have the the compressor at about 50 pounds, which is what I spray the, that's what I spray the helmsman at. Looks like that latex gets kind of clogged up on that, on that nozzle. But, I think so, yeah. I'm gonna let that, uh, we're gonna shut the camera off for a second. I'm gonna let that compressor charge up 
and I think I'm going to kick up my air pressure a little bit. I've got it at about 50 pounds. I think I want to kick it up a little bit, see what happens. We'll be right back. Okay, compressor's off, and I kicked it up to about 75 pounds now, and I think it does. I really don't want that to happen. A little bit better coverage. Yeah, it covers much better. You can see that. So I'm learning with you guys. <laughs> and the thing is, this stuff is the fast dry. It's fast drying, it says. So I may go ahead and put another coat, but I'm going to see if I can... See if I can make this coat... That looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks like about 75 pounds so far over on this edge. I didn't want it. About 75 pounds is about right for this, and I didn't thin this at all. Remember, this is straight out of the can. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, you guys, we're going to let this dry. If I have to put a little bit more on, I might. We're going to see what it looks like after it's dry. But I think it's going to dry pretty quick with the sun out and there's a little bit of a breeze blowing. Then we're going to get back inside the studio and we're going to sand off the surface, see how it looks. Okay, it's been about an hour. Uh, this stuff is definitely uh, fast drying. Let it set out in the sun and the breeze for about an hour, and uh, and it worked out great. So check out uh, how nice that that paint came out. Now I after the camera went off, I touched it up a little bit here and there, but um, it covered very very nice. I'm very happy with it. So and it blends right into the edge of that primer. So I don't see any issues with it at all so far. So let's uh, let's get to sanding. I've got my um, my 40 grit belt here on my skill sander, and I'll kind of rough it again. Like I say, these are going to be gold. This is going to be gold. This is the only thing that's going to be wood color. Now on a sign like this, this is really where you have to watch out for tipping and not grinding off the edges of those letters. You have to have a really uh, light touch with this uh, with this sander especially the rough belt because it will grind quickly as many as some of you may know all right here we go let's see what happens here Okay, I'm going to spin it around, sand the other half, oh, my pad moved on me. sand the other half, then we'll put on, uh, we'll move to the, the fine belt.
All right, you guys saw that. I let that, I if you can zoom in right here, babe, I let that, uh, the sander kind of dip on me a little bit and see where it kind of took a, a little bit of a, uh, a gouge, I guess, out of the bottom of that nine. And I'll show you, uh, show you how I fix that. I'm laughing. You guys didn't see this. You didn't see what I saw. But anyway, so you can see I, I took a little bit out with, the, uh, with that belt. But what I saw is as soon as that gouge happened, I looked up and Vicky's eyes were about that big around because she thought, oh no, you messed it up. Anyway, um, that was funny. I, I had to think about that for a second and then I started laughing. So that, that's a great example of what can happen if you lose concentration just for a, for a millisecond. I let that, the edge of that, what happened was, I was doing this and I kind of went this way and it just tipped just slightly and the edge of that belt caught on the edge of that nine. <clears throat> I really probably wouldn't have to do anything about it because it's going to be painted. But um, this is how I, I so I, I got a little bit of it out there with that rough belt. Now I'm going to see if I can um, fix it with the, the uh, this is my, I think this is like 170 grit or something like that. But it's a much finer belt. See, it pretty much is gone. Yeah, so you're good. the neat thing that I like about these small sanders, thank you, <laughs> that I like about these small sanders is I can really kind of pinpoint where I need a little bit more sanding if I have to. And the fact is that's a little bit lower than here or here or here. But for all intents and purposes, unless you really looked at it from the right angle, you'd never see that. So that's just um, kind of, that's what I do. Anyway, all right, let me finish this thing up. All right, I think I got most of it. I don't see any spots. So let's, um, we'll turn the camera off and we'll come right back for the reveal. All right, you guys, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's get this thing revealed, see what it looks like. Too bad. Okay, let me see if I can. Oh, you want to? I want to just zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Can you hold it up a little bit? Yes, more? I can. Or not goes to my down. sander. I'm glad that is my toe. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit really of a good. sawdust cloud kind of settling. That tree's pretty cool. 
So I gotta, I gotta kind of <coughs> take my fine brush and get these little, little hairs off of there. So we'll be right back and set up and do that. All right, so we've got these little tiny, after we sand, we've got these little tiny uh, hairs or feathers, whatever you want to call them. Normally when I take those off, I'm going to use a, a really soft bristle brush, either this one or I think I've got my other brush around here somewhere. Actually, that I like a little bit better, which is the, um, like the shoe shine brush. So you got to make sure your brush is fairly clean. And then what I do, bless you. What I do is I like to blow air on it at exactly the same time I'm brushing it off. I hope you could kind of see what I was doing there. Now sometimes they won't all come off, so then I just use my fingers. There's still a few little ones on there that didn't come off with a brush. So then I just literally just use my fingers and kind of go around them. And get the rest of those out there. Now I did notice that down in here, there was a couple spots like right down in here. I don't know if, you, can you get right down in there, babe? right down in that one of those little tree pockets, I guess we'll call it. Um, that's where a Sharpie would come in, will come in handy if I had one. Now this is not, this might be actually, that's the one place that I don't want it to bleed onto the surface. So that's just the little, little super fine point Sharpie. Those come in really handy for spots like that. All right, you guys, that is it for today. So we are going to have, um, after now, I've, I've kind of got this figured out. We're going to have two more videos. Wednesday's video, we're going to be, are they not, oh, I thought you were waving, you were wiping the sawdust off the screen. Uh, Wednesday's video, we're going to put the uh, finish on this, the exterior finish. And then uh, we're going to have another little segment on the end of that video. And then Friday's video, we're going to start painting that gold. And we hopefully get that wrapped up, this whole thing wrapped up on Friday's video. That's what I'm hoping. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys. It, it appears you guys like this kind of thing. So please give me comments and feedback if, uh, if this is the kind of thing that you like. I will, I've got a couple more projects kind of in the back of my mind that I'll do the same kind of thing and do a series of videos all the way through. Um, but I'm having, we're having a lot of fun with it and it appears that you guys kind of like this thing. So uh, let me know. Send me, uh, remember, you can comment or on the YouTube channel or send me a direct email, eric at makerwoodsign.com. That's really the best places to to comment and I feel a sneeze coming on in about 10 <laughs> seconds so I think I'm gonna sign off right now before I blow stuff all over this sign anyway nice. guys sorry <laughs> we'll see you on Wednesday have a great one bye bye